So how did you like learn like like cutting like because I I found an interview of you and I you were super similar to me. You said something that really related to me and because all right, my buddy my buddy Santi, right, who works with me all the time, I'll bring him up again, but like he's 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 very technically he can cut his face off, right? And he learns so fast. I taught this kid how to chirp like three years ago, four years ago, something like that. And I'll never forget, like six months later, he could chirp flare. And I'm like, what the fuck? How the fuck? You know, and I just taught him how to chirp, right? And he's regiment, but it's because he's regimented. This dude, like Santi will practice cuts for three, four hours a day. And then like even to this day, he practiced 30 an hour a day. Like he's so regimented every day. And and that is how you learn something. And I get that. So I, so my excuse in my head, what I would always tell myself is like, yeah, you just got to do it every day, Nick, but you suck at it. And that's why blah, 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 blah. But then I hear you in an interview and you literally just, just said exactly what, what I do. You're literally like, yep. You know, I, I, for me, like I, I really just kind of like binge something and then that's it. Like, I don't like do something every day. I'm not good at regiments. Like, is that how you learned how to cut? Did you have regimens or like, what did you do? Um, so I guess just, just a quick backstory. Like I started off originally like as just like a mixing DJ. Um, it wasn't until I heard DJ spin bad on the radio, like in the early two thousands that, you know, he like hearing him is what made me want to cut. So, but the, the thing is the area I grew up in, there was no culture for it. Like I grew up in the boonies, you know what I mean? Like just sticks and woods. And <laughs> I was literally the only DJ that I knew of in, in like, I don't know, 50 mile radius, Chesterfield, <laughs> Chesterfield, yes. Massachusetts, right? Exactly. Exactly. So you can imagine just by the name. Um, so, so for, yeah, so, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so for the first like couple of years, it was like, I had to basically hear what I heard the DJs on the radio doing and like, try to like figure it out. And I had like, I was clueless. Like I, I had like, you know, shitty gear to start off with. I didn't even know like what the industry standard stuff was. And I was like cutting with like the phono line switch instead of the crossfader. I was like, Oh you know, wow. I guess like how they used to do it in the eighties because I didn't know it. Yeah. Better, you know? So it wasn't until like, you know, maybe like the late two thousands that, you know, YouTube started to become more popular and there was a lot more DJ videos on YouTube. And I, I was able to see actual videos of guys like, you know, Mixmaster Mike and, and uh, DJ Cooper, DJ revolution and so I, you know, that was kind of like how I, I learned visually after a while was, was YouTube. Um, because like I said, there was never any DJs around. So I guess at, at the start of it, it was just pure excitement that, that drove me. It wasn't like, I'm not, you're right. I'm not good at regimens. I'm not good at, you know, being consistent with things, but I was consistent with practicing scratching just because of how excited I was to get it down. So I would, it wasn't a, it wasn't hard for me to, you know, if I had the time spend two, three, four hours practicing. And even today, you know, to this day, I still do, you know, I, I spend as much time as I can practicing, not because I feel like I have to, but because it's just, it's, it's naturally exciting to me. You know what I mean? Um, but true, you know, now, but now knowing what I know now, there's more specific things going back that I, I would have done differently, uh, to really get myself there a lot faster. A huge thing is practicing over a metronome. If you practice over a metronome, you will tighten up so fast. You know what I mean by metronome? Yeah. Like a click track. Really? Yeah. 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 So if you get, if you open up like Ableton, like Ableton has a metronome you could use, even if you go to Google, you could just type in metronome and they even have like a little slider for uh, your beats per minute. But here's the thing. When you practice scratching to a beat, you're still, you're still getting good. Cause obviously there's no such thing as bad practice, but when you're practicing over a beat, there's all these things inside the beat that guide you to the next pulse. You know, the one, and two and three and four, those main pulses, usually on the kicks and the snares. Yeah. Uh, between kicks and snares, you have hi hats, you have chords, you have all these things that, you know, help you stay on beat. With the metronome, all you have is just the pulse. You know, you don't have any hi hats in between. It's just one, two, three, four. So when you practice scratching over a metronome, your rhythm, your your inner pulse, as they call it, which is your natural ability to keep rhythm, it strengthens a lot faster, and you're able to gain control of your cuts a lot faster than you know if you're just practicing over beats all the time. No um, shit. Yeah, yeah. I you know I I tried it myself, and you know it it definitely makes a big difference. So now when I want to get down a new cut, 
you know, I just, you know, I practice over a metronome. And another thing is too, is breaking things down in the increments. It's hard for me to focus on the same thing for a long time. Like I can't say like, Oh, I want to get good at this, like, you know, two click combo or whatever. So I'm going to practice it for like six hours straight. I can't do that. So what I do is I break it down into two minute segments. I'll, you know, say, okay, I'm going to practice this cut over a metronome for just two minutes. And then, you know, um, what I'll do is, uh, you could find like an interval timer where it's like, you know, you, you, a lot of times athletes will use it. It's like you set it for like two minutes and then you'll set it. So it has like a 30 second rest in between. So I'll make a list of like four cuts. I want to learn. I'll make an interval timer. That's such a good idea. Have like four oh. rounds of, uh, of two minutes with 30 second rest in between. And then boom, there's a good, very, uh, productive practice session right there. You know, so treat it like a workout. Like literally, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's literally like this is my gym right here. You know, I I hate working out for real. It's it's hard for me to do, but this is this is my gym. You know, um, and and it's fun for me. You know, like I said, it's just it's a it's a blast. I enjoy practicing, um, and 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 the better the better you get, the more fun it it, it becomes. So like I, I hear you with like what you're saying, where you know sometimes you feel discouraged because you're like, oh, I you know I'm not at this level that I want to be. Uh, if I was at this level, it'd be a lot more fun to scratch, but you know, just try to have as much fun as you can with the skill. And I have seen your cuts before. You definitely have some skills. So like have fun with the skills you do have. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. You don't have to and, say and it just because you're on the like show, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Yeah. And you just got to enjoy the process. That's like such a, like, yeah. a major key. So like literally like that was it. Like you were just enjoying the process so much that you did practice. Like and you continue to practice because you just, you like it. And that, and that's true. Like the, the, as you get things down, cause like in the beginning, it's just literally listen to yourself suck over and over. It took me a, like mm -hmm. a year to learn how to chirp too. And it, it was just, over over and over and it's just like why why can't i get this I'm, I'm i'm actually excited to i always set my cue at the beginning of the sound so i'm actually excited to like set it like right before so it's silent and then try it like that and then just push it up is that what you're saying so yeah you well little... still yeah still keep the cue at the very like where or the bring sound the record is. back but yeah bring and when i say bring the record back like it's not even it's going to be barely barely visible like yeah. you know i'm talking just a little bit you know what i mean just find that sweet spot where you know it's like it's the silence and then if you move it just a little bit you hear the tip of that ah sound um there is a video somewhere you know i'll try to find it there is a video i actually did um talking about that i think it's on facebook though i don't think it's on youtube but i'll, I'll send it to you I, it's, it's exactly what you're talking about with, with the chirps because you hear Word. some guys and yeah they have like those like jackhammer sounding chirps and it's like that's uh you know, yeah, that's, that, I wanted to accomplish gun. that. So yeah, yeah. And chir yo, chirps sound so nasty when you get them like that. So oh it, yeah, it's definitely like 190 BPM chirps. Like I, I see. Oh, who, who did I see doing that the other day? I think it was eight track or something. I was like, ugh. Like it's like, Ugh. it's like how? There's no way. Like I can't. I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I just I put my head down and go away. <laughs>